Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Barnabas this morning. So we begin at section one on our order of service. We respond together the words in bold. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. In your light shall we see light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can quench. And Faye's going to play for us a couple of verses of Be Still My Soul. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. 
And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. And so let's pray. Lord, on this All Saints Day, as we remember those who have followed you faithfully, may your word be a guide to our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, we are in the middle of the shortest season in the church calendar, the season known as All Hallows Tide. It began yesterday with All Hallows Eve, today is All Hallows Day or All Saints Day, and the season ends tomorrow with All Souls Day. Traditions vary, but in the Anglican Church, All Saints Day is the day when we celebrate the faithful believers who have gone before us, and All Souls Day is a time to remember those lost loved ones who are dear to us. For centuries, Christian churches have held services on All Souls Day to commemorate lost loved ones, and many churches today continue that tradition of holding All Souls celebration on the Sunday nearest to All Souls Day. Because we're not able to hold an All Souls Day to which we invite everyone who has lost loved ones this year, because we're not able to do that. We are remembering in our service today, on behalf of all those in our community who have lost loved ones. Shortly, I will read out the names that you have given me that we've been asked to remember, but we're going to take just a few moments first to think about All Saints Day, as well as All Souls. If I asked you to tell me about saints, I wonder who you would think of or what you would tell me. I grew up thinking of saints as people who were especially good and I later discovered for myself that the stories of some of the more famous saints show them behaving in ways that I think of as anything but saintly. Of course I shouldn't be surprised by that I shouldn't be surprised that sometimes saints don't seem all that special, because in most of the Old Testament, and in all of the New Testament, the saints were simply those who believed in God, who believed in Jesus. For the early church, the only thing that made saints different from other people was that saints knew their need of God, and they sought a relationship with him. According to the Bible, according to the early church, Every one of us here, we are all saints. In the Bible and throughout Christian tradition, the saints are very often called the blessed to indicate that they have received God's grace. In today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, Bible scholars think that the word blessed is being used in that way. Jesus is not talking about a reward that you will get if you behave in a particular way. Instead, Jesus is talking about a spiritual quality that some people have, a spiritual quality that people acquire 
when God is a focus of their life. Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. The Greek word poor that's used there is the same word as the word used for beggar. And the, spirit, the word spirit that's used is the same word that's translated as the breath of God. So that phrase could be translated as blessed are those who beg for the breath of God. But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Here Jesus uses the strongest Greek word possible for grief. I'm reminded of Peter when he went out and wept bitterly when the cock crowed after he had denied Jesus three times. Peter wept as he realised how far he had distanced himself from God and from Jesus. Blessed are the meek. The meek is a very difficult word to translate. It's the word that's used elsewhere for an effective medicine. It's the word that's used for a broken in cot. It's a word that's used to describe something that is both powerful and yet also gentle. I believe we are intended to see the meek here as those who submit their will to God's will. Those who allow God to shape them, allow God to work through them. Of course I could go on through the whole list, but I'm not going to. I believe that what the blessed, what the saints that Jesus speaks of in his Beatitudes all have in common is that they are those who are wholeheartedly seeking God. They're not perfect. Sometimes they're not even particularly good. But they are those who long for God and who continually long to love God more. And to those people, to those saints, Jesus promises the kingdom of heaven. And so we remember at funerals, we remember at all soul services, that God offers his blessing of eternal life to all those who in this life have groped after him, however dimly, all those who have sought, however faintly, however intermittently, to live a good life. So, at All Souls Services, we express our trust that our loved ones are safe in God's hands. So let's pray. The prophet Isaiah said of God's anointed one, A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. God our Maker and our Redeemer, help us each day to trust that our loved ones, to trust that our own lives, are safe in your gentle eternal care. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so now we come to the part that in your order of service is called the commemoration of the faithful departed. And I'm going to begin by reading the names that I've been given. And at the end of this service, I will place the basket with those names up on the altar and it will stay there for the forthcoming week. And so today we remember Edwin and Ella Drabble, Jill and Mary Glenn, Alan Shinner, Harry and Sol, Maggie Harrison, Judy Dean, Ronald Prendergast, Keith Hanks, Roy Poochin, Martin Roche, Percy Mallet, Janie Mills, Jim and Joan Hall, Wynne and Ian Dalrymple, Mark Gardner, Sheila Biggin, Len Leonard Kitchen, Charles and Shirley Guest, Brenda Taylor, Jane Clark, Pat Fowler, Ron and Joseph Bell, Ben Garrow, 
Paula Holcroft, Thomas and Florence Limmy Watts, Paul Nichols, Neville and Shirley Williams, John Wilson, Gary, Anne Harvey, Evelyn Wilson. And we remember too all those remembered by us or by those in our community whose names have not been mentioned here but are known in our hearts and known to God. To mark our remembrance for the rest of this service, begin to light a candle to remember the fire. There's an all song service. We would invite family and friends to come out and light a candle for their loved ones. Because we're not able to do that, this candle is for them all and for all those who remain. And so, section five of our order of service. Gracious God, your peace passes understanding, your joy knows no bounds, your love is all in all. Hear us as we commemorate those we love, whom we have placed into your hands. We remember our loved ones with sorrowful hearts, with thankful hearts. We thank you because you made us in your own image and gave us gifts in mind, body and spirit. We thank you now for those whom we have loved but see no longer. As we honour their memories, make us more aware that nothing in life or death can ever separate us from your eternal care. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, for those who have lit our lives with joy, who have touched our lives with tenderness, whose loss fills us with longing, we give thanks in glad remembrance. Amen. And now Jane is going to lead us in our hearts. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Faithful God, we thank you for the example of all the saints, those recognised by the church, and those known only to a few. As we go from our worship today, help us to follow in their footsteps, with courage and with hope. We may live ordinary lives, but help us to make a difference and to follow their example. Make us determined and committed like them to do your work and live out your word in our parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who represent us in government and those with the power to bring about positive change in people's lives. May they be men and women of integrity, guided by a desire for public service and a love of truth. May they also be just and compassionate, so that we may be led in ways of righteousness and mercy, especially in these difficult times. As our lives continue to be gripped by the coronavirus pandemic, be with each of us. Help us to make decisions that will be for the good of all. We pray with hope for a time when this virus will no longer have the hold over the world that it does at present. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we give thanks for the efforts you have made around the country to feed children and families who are struggling. We thank you that hunger can now be talked about without shame and is no longer hidden in the way it once was. 
We give thanks for all who are supporting those in need in the Hope Valley and beyond. All those saints who are in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for a spirit of love, forgiveness, tolerance and acceptance in our relationships with our families, friends, neighbours and colleagues. We pray for the young and the elderly, the poor and the vulnerable, for families and for all who feel alone. May we support and care for anyone uh, within our reach in the present crisis. Remember those who are sick in our parish and benefit. And we pray especially for Leonard Aberton, Petra Bridgestock, Kate Brown, Wendy Collier, Michael Emerson, Emma, Denise Furness, Jenny Hare, Phil and Marion Hayes Allen, Mary Lee, Peter Mummery, Bill Smith, and especially all those who are suffering from the coronavirus in our community. Lord, in your mercy, we remember all those who've gone before, before us and have died in the faith in Christ. Loving God, thank you for all those who have shaped our lives, but whom we no longer see but feel still in our hearts. Help us to remember them well and trust that they are at peace with you. We remember especially the family, Morris, and his two children and the friends of Judy Dean, who passed away this week. Merciful Father, Thank you. And now Douglas and Mary are going to lead, are going to play for us a love that will not let me. This hymn was written by a Scottish and blind minister, Victorian, wonderful hymn. Um, and he was well known, George Matheson. Yeah, and I'm not 
Thank you very much, Douglas and Mary, for leading that beautiful hymn for us. We now come to our great Thanksgiving prayer, to our sharing of communion. If you have not shared communion with us in this church before, since we opened up again after lockdown, um, there are just one or two little things that you need to know. Firstly, I am not, at, not allowed to speak over the elements when they are uncovered. So when I come to distribute communion, I will put my face mask on before I uncover the elements, and I will give to each of you in silence. So I will lift up the elements, I will say the body of Christ, I will then um, take off my face, um, uncover them and then take off <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it the right way around. Anyway, <laughs> and also we need to remain socially distanced. And we could not see any way in which we could remain socially distanced in this church if we come out to the front. So I will bring communion round to you while you remain seated in your pews. I hope it will be very clear and very simple. So section seven of our order of service. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our love that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night when he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one body. body of Eleven on our order of service. We pray together. Father of lights, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, keep us in the light of Christ to shine in your work that all may believe in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Faye is going to play for us a couple of verses of that wonderful hymn. How great thou art.
And now may God give to us and to all those we love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and with all those we love and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.